this watercolor, I used a round size 2 paintbrush, a square size 12 paintbrush, a water brush, a silver pilot paint pen, a white calligraphy pen, some drafting tape, my koi watercolor palette, and some case and watercolor paper. I start by taping down my paper and running my finger along the inside edge so the water doesn't leak through. Then, using my water brush, I wet the paper. The next thing I do is trace out the Aurora Borealis. It's really important when you're using watercolor that you uh, figure out what's your lightest area on your painting and trace that out first so you don't get any darker colors in that area. I then outline the aurora with a blue for the sky. I do this while the yellow is still drying so that the sky blends into the lights a little bit, making it look more natural. The next thing I did was I filled in the sky using a darker and a deeper color of blue. I used my water brush to fill in a little bit above the lights. I then let the paper dry. This painting is a night scene, and so I want my sky to be darker, so I use a higher concentration of paint and I layer it over top of my sky. This next step is a little tricky. You want the lights to look transparent, so you wanna bring some of the sky through the light. I did this by taking a higher concentration of water to paint and bringing it in from above and below the lights. Then, once again, you're gonna layer your paint. So use a higher concentration of paint to water. And basically, yeah, during the step, I went over everything again with a higher concentration. Around the lights, you can see I kind of added a little bit more green because the light is gonna dilute the dark blue and make it look more green in the sky. I use my water brush to kind of blend the colors a little bit better. And I, can, I found that I can use a higher concentration of paint on the tip, and then when I want to blend it, I use the whole brush. The next step is adding the foreground. What I did is I used a high concentration of black paint and painted some silhouettes of trees. The trees in the distance are gonna be smaller, and the trees closer up are going to be taller and bigger. This is what gives the painting some depth. I have added a little yellow to the forest floor there to make it look as if there's water. You just want to make sure that yellow is dried before you add the trees on top of it. When painting the trees, don't worry about precision because every tree is different. You just kind of paint some squiggly zigzag lines up and down the trunk and that's it. Oh, and also I made sure to bring some of the trees on top of and in front of the lights to give the painting even more depth. Okay, and the final thing that I did was add some stars using the paint pens. I dabbed the paint pens on the tape a little bit to see how big the stars would be because you want some big ones and small ones. Check out the links below to see where my inspiration came from as well as a list of supplies that I used, and feel free to comment on any ideas you may have for future paintings.